Hey, this is Pete from MyJourEvents.com. Welcome back. Today we're going to be covering an issue that somebody asked me about. Can we indent or inset any font using Blender 2.8 or 2.9? The answer is yes, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Let's get started. Okay guys, so let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is going to remove my standard model there and I'm going to go and add in my background image just because I know Blender doesn't store that. Okay, so I've got that set and what I want to do now is create a letter and it's just going to create any letter in here. I'm going to do Shift A. I'm going to come over and add in text. So with our text added, now I'm going to go into edit mode. Or actually, I'm going to size this up. Let's make this a little bit bigger. And let's zoom out a little bit. And we are going to I don't know, zoom in a little bit. And I want to edit my text. So with the text selected, press the tab key and go to edit mode. I'm going to backspace. And I'm going to do the letter A. Now, I'm just using a standard block type here that comes with Blender. Okay, so I've got my font done. It's still a font here. I'm going to come over to my properties. We've already extruded it. And now I want to give this some depth, so I want to make this a little bolder. So I'm going to increase my depth just about like so. And that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to come back over here with our text selected. I'm going to right click on it and come down to Convert to Mesh. That takes our, our font tools away. And now we can only work with this as a mesh, denoted by the little triangle here where it says text. So I'm going to move my text over to my scene properties and minimize these. Okay. So now I'm going to go into edit mode and if I want to indent this to make it like an indented text, I can use my C key to select my faces here and I can just select the upper faces. And you don't need to hold the shift key down, you're just going to select everything like so. I'm going to right click off of that so that only my faces are selected. I'm going to press the E key to extrude, the Z key and then I'm going to move these down and it, you can see it doesn't work, so I can't extrude those. Okay, so how do we get around that? Okay, so there's a really convenient way to get around this. It's this. I'm going to look at this from, the, uh, from an invisible, I'm going to turn on in, invisible mode so we can see through the whole model. I'm going to press the one key. And now what I'm going to do is make sure that my faces are selected here with this part here. I am going to hit the uh, left mouse button over on this corner and I'm going to drag it and select just like so. So you can see I've selected the faces that are above the uh, perpendicular area here or the vertical faces. With those done, I'm going to hit X and I'm going to delete those faces. Now I'm left with this big opening and if I turn off invisible mode, you can see my model is pretty much open. Well, how do we get this filled in? Okay, so to fill this in, there's a couple things we can do. Now you can use the face tool, but that's going to give us an error, especially with this particular model, because we have a hole in the middle. So let me show you that. I am going to select the Alt key. I'm going to hold the Alt key down, select the uh, edge tool here, and then hold the Alt key. So we selected the outer perimeter. With the Alt key selected down, held down still, I'm going to hold the Shift key down and select the inner uh, hole that I've created. And if I press the F key to draw my faces, you can see it fills in this top one, so that's not going to work. How do we get around that? Pretty easy. Come over to uh, Edge Tools here, and we're going to come down to Bridge Edge Loops. And now you see it basically selects all of our edge loops there. Okay, that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Now, I have to do one more thing, and that is to inset these. So, pretty simple. With those faces selected, I'm going to use the inset tools here. So where it says insert inset faces, we're going to select that. And I'm going to grab this yellow dot and I'm going to move it down. And you can see it's going to inset our faces a little bit. And with that done, now what I want to do is lower this into the model to give us some depth to that. And I'm going to hit the extrude tool and I'm going to move that down. Just like so. I'm going to go press the tab key to get back into modeling mo or model mode and I'm going to hit shade flat and you can see now we've got a, a, uh, the letter A with an indented area where we can insert diamonds into this. However, there could be still some model errors in this 
and to avoid any problems in the future if we do any boolean operations to this when we go to set stones in this uh, for 3d printing what we want to do is remesh this so i'm going to come over here and hit select box i'm going to press the tab key to go back into modeling mode and then i'm going to come over to my modifiers tab right here and i'm going to add in a remesh modifier i'm going to hit smooth and then i'm going to jump that up to seven press the enter key now let's jump that up to eight just to make sure and now press the enter key and you can see our letter is pretty much remeshed i'm going to apply that and if we go into edit mode now you can see our model is very very well defined quads all along its surface now the reason for that is this makes it easier to work with when we're dealing with 3d printing it also makes this uh, less problematic when we do boolean operations to this so for instance the boolean operations that we have to do are when we add in diamonds so i'm going to come over to jewelcraft well you know let's do something first here let's just set the origin to center of mass and then i'm going to hit shift s i'm going to move this into the middle just to make my life easy just like so now with jewelcraft selected i'm going to add in a diamond we're going to add in a 2.0 millimeter diamond and press ok and I'm going to bring that up to the surface. So I know I want to use two millimeter diamonds and I have to make this letter big enough to accommodate those diamonds. Let's just move that up again and I'm going to move this over and you can see it's still a little bit on the small side so I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger just like so. Let's move this up and over and there we go. I've got my diamonds where I want them. That looks pretty good to me so far. Now I want to take this and duplicate these diamonds. I'm going to just make this a little bit bigger. S Shift Z and I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. Let's move this down just a little bit just like so. And now I want to place my diamonds wherever I want them. So I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate my diamond. Press G and then Y to move that straight up to here okay and now let's take this shift d g x and i'm going to move that over to here shift d g x and i'm going to move that one over here and what i'm doing is just eyeballing the placement of my diamonds so that i get them in a particular row where i want them and if i have to spread them out a little bit i can do that just like so I'm not making this perfect. I just want to give you an option so that you can see how this works. And I'm going to move these a little closer together if I want to. Shift D. Let's move that there. I'm just going to move these down a little bit. And when you get them spaced kind of where you want them and everything looks about as good as you're going to get it. Now I want to duplicate these diamonds on the other side. So I'm going to hold the shift key down with that diamond selected and just grab all the diamonds that I want to duplicate or mirror onto the other side. Of course, Jewelcraft makes this very easy. Come over to objects and then hit mirror and then X. And you can see it mirrors it along the other side. Okay, so there's my letter. It's got recessed, uh, a recessed inset into it, and my diamonds are placed onto it. So I'm going to grab a diamond. I'm going to come over to Select by Stone, so that I've got all the diamonds selected. And I'm going to add in my cutters. And those cutters are now selected. So I'll look at this from the side view. And now this is one thing about using the Boolean tool. I can grab all of my cutters. They're all selected. Hold the Shift key down and select my model. And then I can do a Boolean difference to that. And it should cut out all our cutters. And I think I have one problem here. I didn't poke holes through the bottom of our model. And it didn't go all the way through. I'm just going to do that. I'm going to OK. So with all our diamonds selected, and here you can see all the diamonds are selected, I'm going to come over to Cutters, 
in jewel craft right there i'm going to add in my cutters and the problem is none of my cutters are protruding from the bottom i want them to so i'm going to come over here and i'm going to increase the whole bottom difference i'm going to bring that up to maybe okay here we go three millimeters and now the holes are protruding through the bottom of our a or our letter a and with our cutter selected and i can do that by pressing the one key just selecting our cutters hold the shift key down select our pendant or our letter a and now i can do a boolean difference and apply those this will take about a minute okay so our cutters have been applied you can see all the holes are there and it looks like everything worked perfectly i don't have any errors in my boolean operation and pretty much the reason i didn't get any errors guys is because i remeshed the object into quads if you don't do that you run a more likely chance of when you perform a boolean operation with the cutters tool that you will have errors in your model so just keep that you know just keep that in the back of your mind it's always a good idea especially when you're working with uh, 3d printing that you you consider that um, to compensate for any future modeling that you're doing such as a boolean difference or a boolean union okay so that's how we get that in a block letter a so now let me show you a new way to do that so let me select all of this and we'll get rid of this <clears throat> and i'm going to actually let's let's do this let's save this file save as i'm going to put this on my desktop and we're going to call this uh let's say new folder letters okay i'm going to go into letters and we're going to save this letter a and save that okay so now guys i've showed you how to do the standard font let's just move this over i'm going to grab that and move it over here and now let's add in a new one. So shift A and let's go down to text and let's size this up. Let's go into edit mode and let's do the letter. How about, uh, now we'll do another A and I'm gonna change the font. So I'm gonna come down here to the font tools and I'm gonna come over to my font property and under regular font, I'm gonna open up a folder where my fonts are and I'm gonna grab any particular font that looks kind of funky here we'll grab something oh let's see we can do this letter i want something a little bit on the wider side let's grab this okay so we're going to do uh cantabrigia whatever that is we'll, we'll just grab that hit open font and you can see the letter a is now uh, that new type of font i'm going to size this up a little bit more i'm going to i'm going to right click on it put my cursor in the middle of that and then shift S and move the entire model to the center of my working area. Okay, again, we wanna use the extrusion tool. So under fonts, we wanna come down here and extrude that. We're gonna make that a little bit taller. Looks good so far. Okay, and now yeah, I wanna give this a little bit of, uh, well, I don't really need to make this thick, but we're gonna do it anyway. So I'm gonna come over to, where is it here? Let's close up font, depth, and I'm just going to increase that depth a little bit. Okay, that looks good so far. I like the way that looks. Let's convert this to a mesh. Now, if I look at this as a model, wow, what a, what a huge difference there is. Um, it's just a disaster, and I won't be able to work with all of these faces. So to get around this, I'm going to go into a side view. I'm going to hit invisible. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. And again, we are going to select all the faces above that marker. Oops, let's move that over. I'm going to grab these faces just like so. Let's move that up. Okay, hit X to delete the faces. And now you can see we're still left with a big opening. Okay, now let's go and turn off this mode so we can see our model. And again, what we want to do is select the perimeter. So I'm going to hit the Alt key and I'm going to grab an edge. So just make sure you've got the edge tool selected up here. Press the Alt key and then grab your outer edge. I'm going to hold the Shift key down and I'm going to grab this inner edge here and this inner edge. That looks good so far. And now we're going to give this a new face. So we'll come to Edge Tools. We're going to come down to Bridge 
and it didn't work. Oh boy, what a mess. That's a mess. Control Z. Okay, so how do we get around that? If we do faces, you can see we still don't work. Let's hit Control Z. Now, with the edges selected, I can come over and press Extrude, and then Inset Faces, and this should allow me to inset a little bit, and it doesn't. So on this particular model, there may not be a way around it. You may not be able to make an inset of this. You may not even be able to make one that works good. So how do we get around that? Okay, let's undo this. I'm going to go back to when this was a font. Now let's move this to the middle again. Shift S. Okay, so here we got a font. Let's extrude it and give ourselves some depth. There we go. And if I want, I can give this a little bit of an offset. So I can come over here and add to depth just like so. But before I do that, I'm going to make a copy of this. So with that selected, I'm going to hit Shift D and press Enter. I'm going to bring this up so it's out of the way. I'm going to come over to our original model and I'm going to modify the depth and I'm going to make that a little bit thicker, just like so. Okay, and now here you can see I'm going to take my second font, the duplicate font, and I'm going to bring that down into our model like so. And now if you look closely, you can see we're inset in the perimeter of the entire model. And now I can convert these to meshes and then do a Boolean difference on these. But before I do the Boolean difference, we're going to have to remesh both models. So let's start with this. We're going to convert this particular one to a mesh. Then we'll select our thicker font and we'll convert that to a mesh. I'm going to take our first one and we're going to go into our modifiers tool and we are going to use the remesh option. I'm going to hit smooth and bring that up to eight. Press enter and then apply. And now I'm going to do the same with our thicker letter. So we're going to select that, add in the remesh modifier. I'm going to hit smooth and bring that up to an eight and then apply that. So now if I select this particular model and I hit tab, you can see it's remeshed into quads and also the same with this particular model. So we're good so far and that's going to assure that when we do a Boolean difference on the two of these that we get a good cutout in our font. So with the first one selected, <clears throat> let's come over here and grab the first one, hit tab, select the green font, hold the shift key down, select the purple font, and then do a Boolean difference. This should take a moment. And there you can see I've created an indent into that font. Now, it doesn't look that deep. If I wanted to make it deeper, we'll just undo that. I'm gonna select the green one. I'm gonna move it down just a little bit more, just like so. Hold the shift key, select the purple one, and then do a difference. And there you see I have an indented font. And now I can go and place my diamonds all around this particular piece, and that gives me the perfect indentation. So guys, I hope you found that helpful, and if you did, please give this video a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you want to see more information on modeling, watch repairs, other things like that, uh, 3D printing, 3D printing tips, go to myjewelrybench.com. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day.